What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. I got the boys with me, I got Michael. Yeah. I got Neil. Hello. And we got the results of the OCIC tournament, Oceana International Championships, which, you know, I wish that Brady weren't in a completely different time zone because then he could talk about it because he was here. He, he was there. He, he, lives he was in, at this tournament. Yeah, yeah, he lives in Australia, <laughs> so he was actually out there, but... No, we're going to talk about the results, uh, some cool metagame developments that honestly, it took people forever to use Corviknight, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoy this gameplay and time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, uh, and answer my comment question today, which is, what do you think about Corviknight? You know, what do you think about it moving up in the world? Also, be sure to check out the Patreon YouTube member or Twitch sub program, which gets you an extra video at the top of each week. We just recorded one, me and Michael, using a mouse holding Corviknight, so... Let's go ahead and get yeah. into it. We're, we're going to say Corviknight a very good amount of times in oh, this. Oh, yeah. Because Dude, Corviknight's crazy. <laughs> after first-hand experience with it, it's kind of really good in the metagame right now. Yeah. It's a really good call. What's like, I think of calls made that do well at tournaments, Corviknight's one of the ones that I think is going to go, like, down in the history books for Gen yeah. 9. What's like, funny is a lot of sense right now. when we were recording, I didn't actually, like, look at the results for OCIC yet. Uh, so I was hovering over the Corviknight and I was like, dude, this goes crazy in the bundle. And he goes, yeah, it got second place. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, how am I always second with these things? And I've been using after you mouse hold and I'm pretty sure that there's like an after you somewhere in here. Or someone dude, told I me think, there was like an after I, you in there. I'm not exactly sure, but I think the craziest part about like Alberto's team wasn't actually Corviknight. Like the mom that put in the most work was like Klefki. Cause like it was- Oh yeah, dude. Like it's, it's like Grimmsnarl, but it doesn't lose to Flutter. Yeah, yeah, so like people, it would just like sit in front of everything. It would just set up screens and like, I guess T-Wave was like extra, but it was mainly just set up screens. And then the combination of Volcarona and Roaring Moon would be really difficult to stop because mm -hmm. both of them set up. Like, yeah. I think that was just cool. Yeah, and, and honestly, they're both just like screens curve too. Like it, it becomes just basically unkillable if you have it in the back for some reason. But I would imagine you don't usually bring them both to a game since they're both like speed control. He actually brought, he actually brought both to a decent amount of games. Really? It's like... Set up screens and then you can just spam Brave Bird and it's pretty hard to switch into. You get up Tailwind and then like Chomp and like something in the back and just clean. Yeah, yeah. Citrus Berry is really cool too. I honestly like, I like Leftovers on Corb, but Citrus makes sense for like the sort of team that he's running. Like he just want, he doesn't want to have to like protect ever or like stall out like yes. turns to recover. It's a no, very bulky Volcarona as well. Yeah, and like going into like Iron Bundle, like if you're facing off versus Iron Bundle, like if it hits you with a freeze dry, like you're gonna, well, that's gotta be like a five hit KO if you're like sp if you're like max spit F almost. Yeah, it's a five hit KO with Citrus, and like Citrus is better because a lot of the time you don't actually roost, you just spam Brave Bird, let it go down, get up Tailwind, and then stuff in the back just clean. Yeah, no, honestly, Corviknight's like crazy good. Like if we just look at like the Pokemon, they're like common within the format. Actually, wait, let's see if uh, Picolytics has the tournament usage updated, so we can actually look at like what sort of spreads of Pokemon were there. Uh, no, um, no OCIC, but I guess we can just look at, like, battle usage right now. Uh, something else might have that. I'll search for that while y'all are talking. Yeah, I mean, like, Corviknight, um, just things that it does well into. Don Dozo is, like, definitely a sign that, like, it doesn't, like, it, that it doesn't, like, do too bad against, because, uh, they're usually running, like, EQ, order up, wave crashes, like, the three moves that they'll typically have if they have, like, any offensive moves. So just Corviknight mm -hmm. being able to sit in front of that, um, is really nice. It doesn't get haze, does it? Do it, Corv? No, it, it, people would be using it a lot sooner than. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's mainly just like the icy wind drops, dude. Like literally being able to switch in on like iron iron bundle with like a booster energy and like just reflect the the speed drop is just absurdly good, especially if you're running like a decently fast mon. Like he's got like a he's got like roaring moon here, right? And roaring moon's biggest issue is that it doesn't outspeed bundle, and like now we can like outspeed it. Like that's that's just so cool. Yeah, the team was really neat because, like, Roaring Moon was attack boosting. Uh, Volcarona had Flamethrower. Like, Garchomp was adamant Scarf. So, like, you didn't actually need to, like, play towards setup. You can just mm -hmm. Tailwind, like, and just click buttons. Yeah, and it's, like, fat, too. Like, these are all, like, heavy hitters, but they're all fat Pokemon. Yeah, it's, like, it's heavy hitters. It's fat, and it has bulk, and it's setup. So, you pretty much had everything. Yeah, and just, you know, just, you know, what's, what's it called? Elephant in the Room here. This isn't, like, a normal team. Like, this isn't even, like, an existing archetype. No, yeah, no, I don't think anyone's ever run this archetype. Yeah, and it's honestly Roaring Moon doing good in the tournament feels weird to me. <laughs> the same can be said for Gavin Michaels team as well. Yeah, like there's well, Palafin Pelipper, I mean, but Yeah, I mean he, like he these... did tell everybody that it was designed to be like its own new thing. Yeah. And like, I think the I, best Dragonite, Dragonite Rain is like a thing we've seen a few times already, but like 
uh, I don't know, just seeing like a uh, defensive Terra Poison to like not lose to like hands or flutter is like super cool. But the Dragon Fang is what really gets me here. Like he's just le like no setup required. Like he's just taking KOs with Glaive Rush. Yeah, this actually is... Dragon Fang is inspired by uh, Nyoto because he won the rank season with it. Really? Okay, yeah. wow. Yeah. I was curious about where that came from because I was yeah. thinking, why not Loaded Dice? Yeah. But okay, that makes no. sense. Well, he's got Crash, which gives me anxiety. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I think Nyota Ni 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 ran. Uh, I don't think I think Nyota Ni ran Dragon Fang, but he also had Ice Cold Spear because the two shot into Meow Scarada back yeah. then. I mean, mm -hmm. but Meow wasn't even like a thing anymore. Like the only thing that you would want to like bypass Sash on would be like Great Tusk, and even then, like, like it doesn't matter too much. Do your Terra Poison like, now? Like they're gonna go for the close combat into like yeah. Do you drop to like Headlong Rush? Yeah, but like they're not gonna commit. Yeah, that's true. I think there's like. Yeah, dude, this this back set's like really nice because like your strongest move is Glaive Rush, so might as well just like maximize your damage. Yeah, worth noting that this is the second tournament of Generation Nine where a back Scalibur and a random Terra Poison, uh, I mean not <laughs> random, but like like Terra Poison somewhere on the team mm -hmm. won a tournament. Um, yeah, because Maluka, right? Exactly. Yeah, I think that's uh, just coincidence. San Diego. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely like, coincidence, but I, I like that Terra Poison is something that's like actually valuable now. Yeah, honestly, like, yeah. that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm really interested in just like the different archetypes that are developing because it feels like a new archetype gets added every time we have a tournament. Um, like Dragonite Rain, I don't think was actually a thing before Orlando, and then we saw it. Um, was it Dragonite Rain? Well, it was, it was, it was a thing in San Diego. Oh, was it, it was. It? But it, like, it was where Rain took off. Series like San Diego off. was when Palafin started getting used. So yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Rain was popularized by Gavin at San Diego. Yeah, but I mean, like, it didn't have Dragonite, though. Because I'm pretty sure, was it... No, um, some some were Salamence, some were Dragonite. That's yeah. what it was, yeah. Okay, that's what, like, messed me up. I'm like, I don't think it was Dragonite. But now, like, Dragonite's are popping off. Like, we have literally three of them in, in top eight. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I think everyone. all of them are Terra Flying as well, right? Like, they're all multi... Or not uh, multi-scope, but, like... Um, I mean, this one's strong aerial. stab move. Yeah, strong stab. like you, like you're accepting the fact that you can get like faked out or like intimidated in exchange for like always living a hit from um from like uh, Iron Bundle and uh, and uh, Flutter Man. So it's actually like super worth it. No, this one was really interesting because I had aerial lace and it actually one shot Gavin's uh Amoongus on stream and Gavin really? was like, whoa. Yeah, dude, Gavin just looked at looked at the camera like bro. And it's and it's Terra Normal too. It's not even Terra Flying. Yeah, that was so crazy because Gavin was just like, <laughs> he's like, it could do that. <laughs> That's aerial. Yeah, a that's, good that's the chunk of them were. It, multi scale is trending up on Dragonite compared to uh, Inner Focus. Yeah, which Gavin is crazy because we're like, Inner Focus is going to make Dragonite the greatest Pokemon ever. And then it's like, uh, yeah, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> oh, dude, Gavin probably was like, bro, I have a free matchup and I might actually lose game one. But then he barely, he won game one. It wasn't, it was, it was kind of close, but not super close. And then game two, he was like more focused. So it was just the wash. Yeah. You know what? Well, that... I, I, I want to point this out real quick. Mousehold usage through the roof recently. And it isn't mousehold annihilate most of the time. It's just mousehold fighting type is an absurd combo. Yeah. It's just mousehold like... ghost type is also just as good. I mean, yeah, because like, you prevent like shadow balls. Yeah, I, I genuinely believe that Mousehold Goldengo, like set up Goldengo, going into Knoxville is going to be very, very popular. Like, oh, I everywhere. think that needs to be something that gets prepped for. Like, yeah. I don't think you can go into a tournament not prepping for that. Honestly, I think Mousehold, Mousehold's like top three mods for me right now. Remember your video? Remember the one we made on like. Yeah, Pokemon? and then like the next day, the next day, Mousehold usage like shifted. And then it was like, oh, well, now <laughs> it's like pure support. And we're not using Pop Bomb on any sets. You know how Dragon was in this cut too. Wait, really? Where? Oh, right there. Wait, hold on. <laughs> no, it's um, it's scroll so up. it was a, it was a strong tailwind setter. Like scroll up, like top eight. It got top eight. It got top eight. Oh, there it is. Alfreda, yeah. Okay, well, Alfreda. I don't. You know, amazing player, amazing team. Don't respect it though. Look at these. Look at DD <laughs> armors. No, don't respect it. Um, uh, DD armor is just base. I love yeah, DD armor. Uh, I hate it. All right. Okay, well, to be fair, it's one. I still think Hydreigon's not that good. I get it, it on the theme. It's it's a dark type of levitate that you can earthquake next to with Great Tusk. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Ooh, this is on like that. this is like the highest Garg we've seen in a few in a few weeks. Yeah, I know that's Jude's team. He got it to rank one, and he beat out rank two by like a hundred points. Yeah, <laughs> is that a Vivalon? Like eighty five GXC two. Whoa, bro pulled up with triple Ghost type double friend guard. No way. Yeah, no, that man. That's <laughs> 
that man's a legend. That's how he... Oh, and it's 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 like set up uh, Cloak Golden Go too. Wait, this team goes hard. Yeah, no, this is one of the coolest teams. Vivalon's actually a legit Pokemon. Like yeah. it, like Compound and Hur Compound Eyes Hurricane or like Friend Guard Tailwind. Yeah. I mean, it, honestly, it's crazy that like Vivalon's like usable in this format. This might be honestly, I think this might be my favorite format. Like, I like it more than Series One, low key. Really, I like Series One. It's a lot easier. No, I build. like I, I like this one because like I feel like the constraints on team building are like so tight that it forces you to do like really cool stuff like this like triple ghost like works yeah, yeah. it's just that it's really hard to cover for everything and that makes team building really stressful mm -hmm. very much so that's true i like gothitelle so i like this format more yeah. <laughs> gothitelle has been popping off lately like we saw it do really well at orlando and like now it's actually it, it didn't have there were like no gothitelle on top eight but like there was a ton of gothitelle and cut there's a ton of Gothitelle at the tournament. I mean, it was one of the top 10 most used Pokemon in the tournament. So, yeah. so I mean, it was uh, uh, Arcanine slash Tusk. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> they, oh. they got the <laughs> oh, picture yeah. of Great Tusk that says Arcanine under it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, honestly, like, go ahead. You know, Great Tusk, it's it's VGC 2023's Arcanine. Except for Arcanine. It is He's in Cinema. So <laughs> very interesting to see that in top eight, there is no Talonflame Great Tusk. There's Great Tusk, but there's not Talonflame Great Tusk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because D Knight can Tailwind, and that's like pretty solid. Yeah. I don't know. Like I think well, I think Talonflame Great Tusk is good in early rounds for like stopping teams that just aren't prepared. Um, it's good to play quick. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, for, but like, like the slow, you, you'll form, notice that like the yeah. teams that are doing well, like yeah, there is HO. Like, but all of these teams have like a slow, methodical play style. If you like fail um, on HO, you know what I mean? Like yeah. even Colin's team, like a lot of his Pokemon were super offensive, but they all had like bulk, like invested like crazy. Like the Fluttermane was super bulky, Bundle was super bulky, T Knight was bulky, Gambit's bulky, and then like Friend Guard. Yeah, like honestly, Friend yeah. Guard just gives you so much wiggle room in this format. It's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I mean, and, and worth worth noting about like speeds of offense, right? If we're talking about like you know how hyper offense and Talonflame Great Tusk wants to blitz you straight out the gate, Gavin Michaels team all the way at the top up there. If you watch the final set, I mean, turn one, Volt switching with Iron Hands, switching Palafin out, and then getting Rain up with Palafin Hero Mode in one turn, like that's that's how you do that. That's how you do like. Yeah, no. A mode I, of having fast offense. Yeah, no, that's it's, that's it's, what I was saying, dude. Like as soon like, I put out the tweet, I was like, hey, Volt Switch is the best move on Iron Hands. And it's literally just such a flexible move, dude. Like being able to immediately get Palafin Hero is so crazy. Yeah, no, Volt Switch hands really? is crazy. Like I've actually on some of the teams, I've actually just dropped fake out for heavy slam. Just because like Fluttermane are bulky enough. Yeah, and honestly, like a lot of a lot of the time with Iron Hands, like fake out's nice. Like it's a nice tool, right? But it kind of feels like locking yourself into like being a fake out mod. It it sort of tunnel visions you in like yeah. a way where it's like you're not getting full potential out of your iron hands. Like it's weird, yeah. you know. I, I think open sheet you all like that definitely need fake out. But if it feels like closed sheet, then you can get away with no fake out. Like um, Pengy, yeah. Like Pengy did. Pengy dropped fake out for protect on Rillaboom to win um one of the regionals last year, and that's because it was closed sheet. So like Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah well, after, I mean, after, after that tournament, like every Rillaboom ran fake out because you couldn't get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about fake out Volt Switch on the same Pokemon, right? How many times have we seen a Pokemon like that do really good? I mean, that's, that one doesn't even need to be explained, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, like pivot move plus fake out. Yeah, it's Incineroar. Yeah. Incineroar, yeah. Rillaboom, Iron Hands. Yeah. I think if Instant comes back, it's probably better with U turn than it is with Parting Shot because you actually want the chip and not lose the Throat Chop. Yeah, there are good throw chop mods now. Like that's the big thing. Roaring Moon. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can come in on intimidate, but like if you can't parting shot, like you get stuck in there. Yeah. Can we take a look at some of the Roaring Moons? Because I want to see yeah, how yeah. those are changing oh, over it's time. Dance. I, it's all yeah, like, all D dance. Tailwind kind of like fell off hard. Yeah, okay. yeah, because but attack boosted is so much better. Yeah. Oh, this one's got roost. And Jawlock. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, that's the thing. Because I was always saying that I thought I thought like whenever I faced Roaring Moons, it was just farming wins. Because it was like, okay, yeah, they're going to get intimidated. And yeah, they got like an attack or a speed boost. But like, Ring Moon's damage output, even with like Terra Flying Acrobatics, it's Garbo at minus one. Like, you're not picking up any KOs. You have to set up, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you're attack boosting and you get to plus one, that kills everything. Yeah. But... Uh... Like, it, it knocks out Arcanine. I think it does like 130% Arcanine, actually, so... Mm -hmm. 
It, so you want to be getting your speed boost from Dragon Dance, is what it sounds like, rather yeah. than boost. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, and he he does he does so much work as long as you're like not worried about intimidate, which yeah. Um, Don Dozo is still doing really good. Like it's it, I, I I said this at the beginning. I was like Don Dozo is never going to go away. It's just going to be like a consistently reliable archetype for like farming points. Well, once um once Chien Pao comes back, that thing has haze and sacred sword. Oh really? It, it's got to run sash yeah. though. Yeah, but the thing is, is that you can like there's different combos that you can create with like Chi Yu as well to hit it on the special, and so I think Don Dozo will actually kind of just to go away after that. Nah, Don Dozo nah. and Gold Dango, I think, are gonna be like Gold will be fine. Well, you know, through. I want to know what Don Dozo's biggest issue is gonna be. This is my hot take because I'm on this boat. It's so, not gonna be Chien Pao. It's not gonna be Chi Yu. It's gonna be okay, Wo Chien. All right, Wo bro. Chien. <laughs> Eats Don oh, no. Dozo for breakfast. You literally, you got knockoff to get rid of the leftovers. You got Leech Seed to stall it out. His attack stats permanently lower, and you can Terra Fairy, and that's like the best Terra type on it. It's crazy, dude. It's gonna be so much fun to run that. Insane. You know what does beat Don Dozo? Terra Fairy, Breaking Swipe, Roost, Dragon Dance, Moon. Pengy is yeah. he's the goat for that. I saw that too. There is like Snarl, Breaking Swipe, Terra Fairy, right? Like that was a set. Yeah. We were practice sets like well before the event and he beat me with it and i was like bro that set's kind of insane it's it is, so cool dude. all right i mean I, I, do we, we don't really have much else to talk about in this like it, it was it was just like the same archetypes we saw in orlando with like a couple of new ones oh we did see a parish trap team here look it's parrot oh, you want one scream to hell yay Taran's team was really cool Collins? who's that Taran, scroll down a uh, Taran birdie Taran birdie oh yo joe top cut nice all right um oh yeah joe joe did well um, scroll down. Is, uh, yeah. Life orb, nasty plot. This is safety a cool goggles, team. iron hands. He's like, I'm not, dude. It's like, which which iron hands am I? Doesn't matter. I beat both. <laughs> right. oh, here's yeah. another uh, big thing going into Knoxville. I think Terra types on Gold Dengo. I think those are going to trend less more towards like steel and like offensive. I yeah. think they're probably going to switch to something more defensive, like yeah. flying or water. Flying, flying lets you beat uh, Tusk like super reliably, and it, and if you're running your own Tusk, and I learned this like the hard way at the tournament the other day, like if you're running your own Tusk, you should be Terra flying, otherwise you can't Earthquake. Yeah, no, literally. Yeah. I, at one point, I had an air balloon gold dango because I was coping so hard because I didn't want to give up the steel, but I also had a great yeah. Tusk. Like you're right, it should but, just but, be Terra flying. But like it's so easy to get a nasty plot off with this dude. Like it doesn't need the steel boost. Like you can just plot. Uh, yeah. Do you guys remember my air balloon brute bonnet? We don't talk about that. This was so much It was actually good. All right, all right. But uh, okay. yeah, I mean, I think that's that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Alex, I mean, top three archetypes right now. What would you say they are? Top three archetypes. Um, I would I say I think Rain is like number three solidly, right? Uh, and then I like Mouse is number one. Yeah. Dozo. I think Mouse Bulk is yeah. probably number yeah. one. I think Mouse Bulk stuff. Like good stuff plus mouse is always going to be like really reliable and probably the best because it's so flexible. Don Dozo is number two strictly because it will always be number two. Uh, and then rain. And then rain. I think that's it for yeah. me. I, I think Trick Room's Garbo, to be honest. I think Trick Room's like. I think if you want to run Trick Room, it has to be like a balanced room. Like it can't just be like Trick Room. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. be going like Farigraph and Didi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, like more like Alfredo's team that you yeah. see right there at sixth. Like that's, I think, the only way you you yeah, should be running a DDR yeah, or yeah, as an Donald option. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can scroll down to like Alex Donaldson. That one had like Trick Room Goth plus like Sword Stance hands. Yeah, no, honestly, I think Trick Room Goth's really good because it's not a commitment to Trick Room. It's just a flexible way to beat Tailwind. Yeah, yeah. no, because Alex actually used my team, the one I used to win the local. It's just he replaced the light orb off of Palafin for Mystic, and like Trick Room Goth was like huge there. Yeah, dude did really well for him all right well i mean that's that's it you know if you guys enjoyed i'm like excited it. to see how all this change is going into knoxville that's, oh 100 percent. like honestly like, like, oh, whatever, none of this is gonna matter in a week <laughs> whatever whatever this is people are gonna be ready <laughs> it's gonna be corvinite dude like you know how gothitoe picked up the most after orlando corvinite's gonna pick up the most after this tournament that's my call mm -hmm. i think I corvinite both of those like Corvin Backscalibur Bolton. too Backscalibur as well because yeah. it, same same concept as people running uh Glamora at this tournament we caught on that like oh dude Emilio went 10 and 0 at two tournaments with Glamora maybe we should start using that I think Backscalibur yeah. is the same concept going into Knoxville as yeah. well honestly this has to be the most interesting format of VGC like this year of VGC is the most interesting to follow because there are so many players that the format can't not evolve like it is consistently changing uh, and it's just yeah. really, it's a really fun game to see how it changes. So, yeah. Uh, With all the 
on tournaments it changes even quicker yeah yeah all right so if you guys enjoyed cool. like subscribe make sure you check out neil make sure you check out michael um comment down below what you think and we'll see you in the next one bye